welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd play through a game that I've uh, had for, well, up to I think about three years now, uh, called the Signal Simulator. It's about uh, the player basically becoming a SETI technician, that's Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Technician, who's in control of his own installation, looking for, well, aliens essentially, alien intelligence using rated dishes. It's part simulator, part management sim and part horror game um, with quite a lot of easter eggs scattered around in it. Um, so that, uh, you know, uh, go through um, a day of scanning for signals. You basically, yeah, you basically have your own control center where you scan for signals from distant stars and planets, uh, download those signals and uh, get paid in credits for each download, successfully downloaded uh, signal and then use those credits to upgrade your own equipment, uh, making the towers rotate faster, making the uh, coordinate detection system better, uh, making power generation better. And this is where the uh, management part of it comes in because you have to manage your power for your entire installation. Um, you've got a bunch of solar panels that regenerate power during the day and uh, as is the case don't uh, regenerate power during the night so during the night you've got power that's draining out of your systems and during the day you can um, regenerate it using the solar panels um, there is charge effici efficiency there is uh, power distribution there's well let's just jump into the game and take a look um, now I'm going to continue with my current game, so my towers are slightly upgraded a little bit. I've, I've applied a few upgrades, a few modules uh, to it to make them slightly move slightly faster and detect things slightly better, but uh, I'm not that far into the game, so it's still fairly early stages. Uh, right, well, let's jump in and take a look. It's As far as I know, this game is developed by a single developer, and it's running on Unity engines. Uh, well, here we go. Yep, welcome to my little installation. Yep, systems are powering up. There we are. Right, and here's the control center. Now, before I do anything, I'm going to power everything down that I can power down, just while I'm talking so it doesn't suck up too much juice. Okay, here we are. Right. That noise you might be hearing is the helicopter coming in to resupply the base, if I'm not completely mistaken. Let me just step out and take a look. Yep, there's a helicopter that comes in once a, a day, usually in the morning, to uh, provide some essential supplies. Oh dear, we've got a uh, thunderstorm in the area. That's going to make scanning things interesting. Yep. So yeah, the helicopter's going to go over here. There's my control center there. And so put the supplies through that hole in the roof. Um, yep, I've got control over all these radar dishes. I can use them to scan for signals. That booster there is uh, it was part of the storyline. It came in of, of its own. It's basically when you scan a signal that, that can happen. It's a, like a, an event signal. There's like event signals, storyline signals, and uh, basically random signals. There we go, the helicopter is doing the resupply. Can't access the other part of it behind the grades, but... Yeah, okay, cool. And it's done the resupply, it's gonna fly away now. Got my little golf cart here that... Uh, I'll probably be using later on to clean the solar panels with. Right, let's take a look-see. 
tend to not have lights on, but so they don't suck up too much juice, except for the uh, bit in here. There's the little map of my uh, installation with all the ready dishes. And um, right, well, let's begin. Um, problem I have at the moment is the weather. It says here in the weather news that at the moment I've got uh, thunder and lightning with pretty strong winds. And then uh, later on I will have even more rain and lightning until eventually it will be just over clouded. Here's the thing, the problem with lightning is that when you scan for things with while the lightning is going on, it can take out a tower and then you have to go out there and fix it or it can make your entire system restart over and over and over again, which means, uh, which makes detecting signals pretty difficult. Um, right, well, here's the main screen for my uh, antennas. It also tells me the system efficiency and charge efficiency, which, okay, the charge efficiency is at 95%. I like to keep it within the 90 to 100% range, so I've got enough juice for everything. Um, Okay, um, right, well, first things I usually do is I open up this laptop, which is an essential part of the whole process, log in into the terminal, and then run the turbo command to cool down the servers a bit. And then I run the diagnostics to see if everything is in perfect order, and it is. Otherwise there'd be a red message saying that one of the towers has screwed up. Okay, so that's all cool. That's all ready. Um, yeah, now taking a look at all the other menus, you got your database. Well, the scanner is what you use to uh, to begin scanning for the signal. You need to use the scanner first to to uh, get the signal. Then you need to um, kind of like zoom in on it with with uh, the uh, signal control so that it starts listing. Uh, coordinates on one of the screens and then you need to use the um, dishes to actually align them so they will receive the signal and then the uh, the system will then automatically download the signal uh, data once once your dishes have been perfectly aligned right so I'm not going to use the scanner right now so the database contains all the signals you've scanned to date and you've got like I said uh, random signals, uh, which is usually what you get, story signals, which are a bit rarer, and then event signals, of which I've only got one. <laughs> Looks like Elon lost a booster. Well, it landed right outside my window. Yeah, somebody better tell him to, to go and fetch it. Yeah. So that's, that's the, uh, the database, and you can replay the signals, like, let's say... That's a pretty weird signal, yeah. Um, okay, so the upgrades is where you usually, um, at the moment I haven't gotten many credits, but like I said, you get paid credits for every successfully downloaded signal. So you use those credits to improve the um, rotation speed, the elevation speed of your cameras, and all the other bits and pieces here, like energy redistribution and energy recharge and so forth and cooling because your, your your servers do run hot and there is a command that uh, allows you to run uh, the fans to increase the fan speed to uh, cool your servers but you know if you if you invest in cooling they won't be overheating as much um, so there's basically you just use this once you've got enough credits to purchase various upgrades then you've got modules which I have pretty much activated all of them that's yeah again they did cost money to activate i think it was like well and the un installation is seven credits but um install is like 15 for each one of these they like boost your your various um uh systems but here's the thing certain signals that you download um can contain module schematics that are downloaded automatically and what they do is like here in data, 
normally you just have when when you when you first activate the module you'll basically have this basic level uh, that the module operates at. But when you download the module schematic, it upgrades that particular module to the next level. So in my case, in this case, it's uh, level two. So you, it improves your system, but like I said, it, it's fully automatic and you've got no power over it. Uh, so it's just luck of the draw, basically. You need to download the signal that contains the module. Certain signals don't have module schematics, certain do. It's pretty much random. But what you can control is the uh, is the upgrade. You can you can do that yourself. Let's see. You've got storage, where you got all the different components that are being brought by the helicopter. Um, you need. I um, quite often use this. Um, you need. Uh, I'm using the uh, interstellar communications uh, uh, resources to transmit. You can once you've downloaded the signal, you can transmit your own message to see if you can find somebody out there and according to what I've read on the forums, I haven't been successful in that yet, but what I've read on the forums is that uh, if you do this enough, uh, somebody eventually replies to you. <laughs> so <laughs> there is intelligence out there. Uh, you got the terminal where you've, you've got all the main commands. You can simply type in help and gives you all the commands you can use in this terminal and it's basically your your main control over everything. Besides the uh, control panel uh, you saw at the beginning, you also got this, which is, it, this laptop is very important. Uh, you can run diagnostics, recalibration, all sorts of things. Uh, so, for example, the turbo command, which activates the fans, yeah, current temperature 44.2. I'd like to keep the temperature of the service below 50 degrees. So to the turbo command is what you use for, for, for that. Uh, like I said, I did run the diagnostics. And the other good thing about this is that you don't need to type stuff all the time. You just uh, you can use the uh, cursor keys to highlight the last few commands that you've used. And yeah, and, and just do that once you've typed the commands in, obviously. And then you hit the escape key to get out. Um, right, you do have access to the Mars rover in order to find um, radiation signals scattered around your base, which can uh, unlock some very interesting things like, a, well, I don't really want to spoil it, but there are some, uh, there's some stuff out there that you can find with the rover. The problem with the rover is it's slow, dog slow, make that snail slow. So slow, in fact, that you get bored out of your mind before it even makes five meters from where it started from. So I tend to basically upgrade, you can upgrade the rover speed, the uh, agility, the rotation, the whole thing. Uh, I tend to not bother with the rover until I've, I've got enough credits to uh, not worry about my main systems and just spend them on upgrading the rover so I can then move it around. You've got the radio. I'm not gonna, uh, yeah, you basically got a bunch of radio stations online that you can click here, it will configure itself, and then you can listen to music, but I'm not gonna do that in case of the whole DMCA m malarkey. So, but yes, you've got access to the radio stations. Um, uh, there is the shooter, which is basically the um, this little space game. Ah, I'm dead. I think it runs on curses, and you need cur cursor keys to, to use with that. Uh, then you can, uh, once you've got ridiculous amounts of credits, so you can buy different skins for your dishes. Like, <laughs> okay. Um, and then you got the documents, which is basically, yeah, like um, uh, Wikipedia inside of the game that tells you pretty much about every part of your um, control center, what you can do with it, what it does. Um, I do like to, when I haven't played the game for a while, I do like to read up on things if I've forgotten how to, to, to do stuff. Um, right, um, let's take a look. You also get the ser uh, server temperature readout right here, as well as the charge efficiency right over there. Well, the charge is down to 91% now, well, kind of 92, 91, so I wouldn't mind going out there and... Uh, um, 
I'm replenishing, well, cleaning, I call it cleaning the solar panels. It, it will set the charge efficiency back to 100%, giving you all the, the maximum recharge you can get. So um, let's see. So besides the control room, you got the uh, switchboard where you can allocate extra power to like your antennas, your servers when they download stuff and your coordinate detection system. Um, you also got the main, the master server room in here where you can basically, and I don't ever use this because uh, I got all the control from the uh, laptop and the control center, but you can put, do pretty much everything I did on the laptop from in there. You've also got the living quarters. I know it's dark because I tend not to. Yeah, here's the coffee machine where you can refill that cup that you saw on the desk um, with coffee, because you can apparently drink coffee in this game. Yeah, um, there's the bedroom. Yeah, and there's the bathroom. Now, there are some interesting things that happen in here, which is where the part horror game stuff comes in. Sometimes, when you um, sit at your station over there, on one of the monitors, you'll catch a glimpse of an alien standing in this corner looking right at you. Now, I haven't been able to, to do this yet, but um, some people have said that if you see this alien looking at you from here, which is kind of creepy, right? If you, the moment you see that, if you jump out of your chair, run here, you can chase this alien down. Sometimes he uh, appears right outside this window. And sometimes, which is creepier still, uh, you go in here or you run in here, you see he's not in the window, you run through the bathroom, into the bathroom and see him sinking into your bathtub. And I mean sinking, he like sinks into it and, and disappears. So yeah. We got some encounters of the third kind around here, yeah. And yes, you run this entire installation all by your lonesome. There's no one else, it's just you. Um, okay, well, yeah, charge efficiency, okay. So let's, uh, well, at least the thunderstorm has stopped, good. Um, this is, well, I'll get to the rest of it. For now, I just wanna recharge the solar panels will improve the charge efficiency. So, um, you'll also notice that there are these panels here that I can do, uh, can use to lock the doors with. They suck up a lot of juice, so I tend not to. Um, right, well, let's hop into the uh, buggy, golf cart, and it's telling me about the charge efficiency over there, and go over here where I will recharge or improve the charge efficiency by cleaning the solar panels. Ah, too far. Okay. Doesn't break very well. Right, just hit this button. Watch the solar panels get cleaned. Yep. And it should go up to 100%. Excellent. Okay, that's done. Uh, yep control this with WSED keys. Yeah, here's that booster that landed in uh, all by itself from Elon. Yeah. Okay. And you got, it, this place is quite spacious, you can go pretty far out. Right, so I tend to basically just park this thing here because I go to the solar panels a lot, just leave it there. Um, yeah, if I walk around the installation a bit, there's my control room. Is that uh, garage slash resupply warehouse. I have no idea. Well, this thing doesn't operate. It's just there for the looks. But for some reason, somebody shot at it. Yeah, it's got bullet holes in there. <laughs> yeah. That's the uh, view out of my bedroom. It's a bedroom window. Yeah. No, that was the bathroom. Sorry, that's the bedroom window. Okay, there is also here, there's also a diesel power generator that allows you to uh, boost your systems by using this generator, by turning this on. 
but again, you're solely reliant on diesel deliveries from your helicopter, and it does suck up a lot of diesel. So again, I tend not to use it as much as I can, because if I keep the charge efficiency in the 90 to 100% range, by cleaning those solar panels, I don't really need it. Right, okay, well, let's, uh, let's see if we can get a, a signal done. Right, okay, so first things first. Ouch. A server temperature is 46.9. Okay, let's cool down the servers. Yep. Run the diagnostics, everything is in the clear. Excellent. Now, what I need to do is I need to divert power to the uh, scanners. Yep. Now I need to turn everything back on. Uh, that, that, and that. Okay, the system is fully on. Now I can begin scanning. Do the scan by holding down the left mouse button on the screen. Okay, now it's telling me it's to the left and down. Okay. Let's see if we can find this anomaly. Ah, there it is. There's that little patch of... Yeah. There we go. It's now scanning the anomaly. Once it's done the scanning, I need to tune it a bit more to get the actual signal. Okay, now I need to tune it. And it could be either left or right. Ah, there it is. Okay, escape out of that, disconnect. Now I need to tune it even more so that its information will appear over here. Um, so I'll do that manually using the Q and E keys on that button. Thank you. 
four, four, eight. Seven sixty, yeah. I mean, that's seven hundred, six hundred, yeah. Seven sixty. Okay. Now, for the azimuth, so it's two two five. Let's say two thirty to one ninety. Uh, two thirty to one ninety. Okay. See what happens, see if I can catch the signal. If it doesn't catch the signal when it hits 230, then that means the signal is downrange rather than upwards. Yeah, you see it, re it reached 230 already and there's nothing there. So, okay, 231, ooh, it's gone down to, you know what, let's make it 180. Seven, four, one, and turn this off because it sucks up a lot of juice. Right, and now it's basically just sit tight and wait for this thing to download itself. It's already at almost thirty percent while maintaining the signal. If you inadvertently move something here, you will lose the signal, and you'll have to do this whole thing again just to get the signal back up, which incidentally is what you might have to do when there is a thunderstorm with lightning, because lightning can make your entire system a restart by itself, uh, which means you might lose the download. Um, if it hits a tower, you will definitely you lose the signal, you'll have to repair the tower. Well, actually, you don't lose the signal, you just need to repair the tower, but sometimes I've noticed it also be, um, because of discharges, it makes your uh, signal strength start to decrease and you have to basically fiddle around with the controls to try to recapture it. So it's a little challenging, yeah. Well, in the meantime, let's uh, take a little sip. Okay, um, so now it's going. Yeah, this this game isn't exactly fast, uh, but no, let's take a look. Signal available. It's from a planet, an exoplanet. Interesting. Doesn't tell you what the planet is, just that it's from a planet. Sometimes you get it from stars, sometimes you get it from Mars or Earth. Yeah, and sometimes you get an unknown signal, which is like the system has no idea where it's originating from. Those can be quite interesting sometimes. Right, uh, temperature 47, oh dear. Okay, let's like, run the turbo command, cool it down a bit. Might as well run the diagnostics, but everything seems to be fine so far. Excellent. And yeah, as soon as I run the turbo, it's now down to 44.9, it's cooling down, excellent. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, my um, char system efficiency is now going down because it's night time and there's no sun anymore and therefore the solar panels don't work. Uh, but my charge efficiency isn't too bad at the minute, so that's okay. 
Alright, so it's almost done with the uh, signal, or download of it anyway. Cool. And there you go, you could see in the upper left corner, I got paid for it. So I've got a few more credits now. And now it needs to convert it to binary. Yeah. Cool. Okay. That's a... Uh, interesting. Space Explorers Day 204, we have a system failure. That's a story si uh, signal, I'm not exactly... Yeah, it's like there is a story uh, in the game, but you only get it through signals. Right, well, okay. I'm gonna run the turbo just once more. Yep. And, uh, okay. I can drop the signal, you drop it by pressing this button. I don't need it anymore since so I downloaded everything. Now I just need to power everything down so it doesn't basically use up charge, uh, uh, you know, use up juice because, yeah, it's pointless. I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna scan for another signal because um, I don't like doing that at night because at night you don't get any recharge from your solar panels. Um, and uh, running these systems uh, sucks up a lot of juice. So you basically, yeah, you basically start running into energy deficiency, which is not something that I like doing because, like I said, I don't like using that diesel generator outside to boost energy generation because it sucks up a lot of juice as well. So yeah, this is where the management sim comes in. Now, remember when I said about that alien looking in at you? Uh, basically, this is a screen where if you click this button where it says VHS, in here you can upload your own movie and then basically you can you can click play and then watch your own movie in game, which is great. But uh, if you don't watch the movie and just have this green snow going on, uh, sometimes you get a little alien appearing in here looking in on you. Um, Right, um, there's a bunch of interesting easter eggs scattered around. You can find some alien stuff with your rover. Uh, you can, um, there's a hangar not far from, from here, from your control center, that has some rather interesting uh, nods to aliens, the film. Um, yeah, there's there's quite, a, there's a few things. Sometimes you get meteor uh, meteorites falling down, uh, around your base, and you could get your rover to go and then scan the meteorite, for which you get credits as well. So that that's another thing that you can use the rover for, but like I said, it's dog slow, and I, uh, unless you up, up, update it, upgrade it, and it costs quite a bit of credits to, to, to make it actually run properly. Um, now, what I like to do during night time is that what can happen, what does happen, in fact, quite a bit, is that um, while you're using your radar dishes, they uh, become less and less, uh, they, they deviate more and more from their uh, baseline alignment. And eventually, they will become very inaccurate and you won't be able to pick up any kind of signals because your, your, your dishes are completely out of alignment. And uh, yeah, so what I like doing, besides running the turbo command to cool things down, um, is, and the diagnostics to make sure that there are no faults, is, well, first, it's this command that shows you how far out of alignment each one of your 19 ready dishes is. And then I like to run CalStart, which is an automatic recalibration program that recalibrates your towers and again, you can sync in up, uh, your credits into upgrading the speed at which it does this. So it, initially, it's uh, I wouldn't say it's completely dog slow, but it's it's not exactly fast. I think I sunk in one, two upgrades into this, and it's already faster than it used to be. So almost done with one tower already. Yep, there we go. That's the first tower done. There's 19 of them to go. So that's what I like doing at night. It doesn't eat up a lot of energy. And, uh, yeah, you could simply just uh, run this during the night and, well, let's see, what time is it? It's 27 degrees out and it's almost 10 o'clock in the evening. Okay, I'll have a sip of coffee. And I am heading to bed. So, 
label that stuff here. Funnily enough, it's one of those wondrous magical cups that will always keep your uh, coffee fresh and uh, hot. Yeah. Right. Um, I usually tend to turn this off. It's kind of funny walking to your bedroom with the flashlight on. Yeah. There you are. And just hit the snooze button. There we go. It's going to fast forward to uh, basically morning. There we are. It's morning time. Okay. Normally I would uh, I would have drunk that cup of coffee by now and would go here and replenish it at the coffee machine, which by the way also never runs out of coffee. It's a bottomless pit of coffee. <laughs> right. Turn the uh, lights back on. Let's see. 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, okay. You also notice that when you power everything down, at least in the morning, you will see that it, uh, the system efficiency begins to recharge. The charge efficiency has gone down, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go, while everything is powered down, I'm going to go and clean the solar panels again. Um, although first, just to be on the safe side, yeah, okay. Apparently the server temperature while it was doing stuff didn't rise up by that much. Okay, cool. Right, I'm going to go and um, clean the solar panels again. And yeah, I kind of tend to be a bit uh, um, paranoid about the uh, solar panels. But like I said, you know, if you keep it within the 90 to 100 percent range, you don't ever run out of juice for your other systems. So you don't need to muck about with um, um, the diesel generator and stuff. Although, having said that, I am playing this on the easy difficulty setting. Uh, which means that on the harder ones, you probably have to use pretty much everything in the kitchen sink to keep your power levels up. But, why make your life more difficult than it has to be? Right, so, charge efficiency is back up again. Technically, if you want more challenge, you can make it more challenging. Oh, look, the UFO is back. You see that globe in the sky? Um, uh, let me let me show it to you. Yeah, there is, a, there is a UFO right now sitting there observing me. Yeah, you, okay, that's the moon. It's still, it's still kind of visible. Where is the UFO? Right, okay. Let me take a look at it up close. So what that means is I need to head up here, onto the roof, and, huh, disappeared, did it? Ah, it didn't disappear, it got obscured by clouds, darn. Basically it was right over there, and you can use this telescope here to then zoom in on it. That's a shame. Yeah, well, darn clouds. I saw it there initially. Yeah, it's a very interesting little thing, but it's a little UFO. There's a much bigger one hidden around this base. Also, if you go out past the uh, solar panels to the water tower, which is way out there in the distance, you might see it right there. Uh, with your, you know, with your with your golf cart, you can find this. It's some kind of a weird recorder. Um, not exactly sure what it does. It's just. Yeah, it's more like an Easter egg. I'm not exactly sure where it's from or what it what it's for. Um, yeah, okay, so the energy is slowly recharging. Excellent. And basically, okay, so what's the weather prognose, prognosis? Right, okay, so it's sunny with mm, not that much wind. Later it's going to rain, and then it's going to be overcast. Okay, as long as it doesn't go with another thunderstorm, I'm fine with that. So yeah, so basically that's what you do. You basically operate this, you scan different signals, and you get different things. Now, I did get some um, credits for my previously scanned uh, signal. Ooh, look at that. I run the diagnostics and it says there is an error. Antenna server 14 timed out. Okay. Yeah, this is this is one of those bits where sometimes it uh, yeah one of your antennas goes oh no I can't do something and falls over okay right where's the map 
14 okay it's that one over there this is your control center right here so it's not that far okay so what I need to do then is when the uh, one of the antennas goes out of service uh, is hop into my little golf cart find the antenna which is that one over there right in front of me and then I need to reboot it now here's the other thing why I don't like scanning uh, for signals during uh, a thunderstorm what might happen during a thunderstorm is lightning hits the tower and then it's uh, you, you you need to go out ah, there's that helicopter coming in you need to go out to the tower like I'm doing right now but instead of um, rebooting it you need to reset this uh, fuse box down there it's just it just disrupts the um, the whole scanning process besides having to physically go out into a thunderstorm and uh, fixing sh stuff right okay so run the diagnostics here yep reboot now technically you can reboot the entire system from uh, your um, laptop I'm also gonna run turbo okay yep it's fine now you also can ra uh, reboot the entire all all of the uh, towers right away from your uh, laptop in the control room uh, but it's honestly it's easier to just come out to the uh, affected tower instead of rebooting the whole thing and plus like I said if um, if this timeout happens while you while you're downloading a signal well, you've already scanned for it, and you're downloading it, so the download gets interrupted. Then rebooting the whole system will basically lose you the signal. So it's it's better to just go out and fix the um, fix the tower on its own. Yeah, oh, the helicopter went away. Right. So now. If I run the diagnostics again, run the diagnostics at the tower, let's run it here. Yeah, it's clear. Good. Now, I did say I got paid for the... Okay, so now I've got... There we go, I've got 70 credits. Right, let's see. Well, that means I can do two up upgrade. Well, upgrades, yeah, on... The systems I haven't upgraded yet because uh, the price of each subsequent upgrade increases. Initially it's 30, then the next upgrade is 75, for which I now don't have the credits, then 120, and then it just keeps on increasing. I'm not exactly sure what the limit is on the upgrades, but that was it 10 upgrades? Yeah, maximum upgrades. There we are, 10. So let's see, auto calibration. I upgraded it once, so I can't afford it. I only got 70 credits. Rover speed, analyze. And that's for the low rover. Not exactly sure what the polarization speed does, but okay. Let's get that. Yep. So I upgraded that. I did upgrade the buffer before. No, no, I didn't. There we go. I can buy another one. Yep, you basically use the credits to upgrade your stuff until it gets better, faster, more accurate. Um, I've seen somebody play, uh, you know, a gameplay YouTube video of somebody whose towers rotated a heck of a lot faster than mine. Yeah, you need to sink in a lot of um, upgrades into that. Right, okay. So, yeah. That's basically the game. So you, you, you do this, you, you have to manage the installation, the power, uh, and the time. Um, like I said, uh, running uh, all these systems at nights will suck up a lot of juice. Um, and then basically, yeah, you prioritize what you need to do. And basically, yeah, if you, if you want more, you know, to upgrade your system, you have to scan more signals. And that's basically the game. You just do this you can listen to radio like i said i'm not going to do it because of the whole dmca stuff but yeah you can listen to radio there's a bunch of different radio stations some music some not 
whatever. Um, there's even one that's, I think, or two that's included with the game where you could just listen to pre-recorded stuff. And yeah, that's basically the game. Uh, and then on occasion, um, if you feel like it, you can go out there in your buggy, drive around the, the whole of the installation and see if you can find some weird alien stuff scattered all over the shop. And some of them you will bring over here into this box and some of them you'll just look at and yeah, that's that's the game. It's, uh, and by the way, since I'm not downloading or doing anything, I might as well just turn that off. So yeah, that's basically the game. It's not for everybody, but I'm liking it because it's like I said, it's part simulator, part, part management sim and part horror game. Although, having said that, once you've seen all the uh, horror things, uh, it becomes less horror and more funny. But <laughs> still, it's, it's got some tongue-in-cheek stuff in here, and I'm honestly quite surprised by how one developer could have created all of this. It's, it's nice. And it's not an early access game. It's fully finished. It's fully done. So, And it's not exactly expensive, so you can pick it up on Steam if you if you feel like trying this out for yourself. Anyway, thank you very, very much for, for watching and uh, I'll uh, see you in the next video.